just some questions that I have. We are told that there is systemic racism at the university. Hell, we're told there's systemic racism everywhere in the country. Um, the governor of Missouri is a Democrat. His name is Jay Nixon. The governor appoints the board of curators, which is the governing body at the university. Claire McCaskill, a long Standing Democrat senator from the state of Missouri who is out there saying that these protests at Mizzou will be an impetus all across the country. McCaskill argued that the protests at Mizzou will be an impetus across the country and how diverse the faculty is is a problem all over America. The diversity of the faculty? Are you kidding me? Look at the curriculum. The curriculum has been perverted and polluted and corrupted by the American left. Who cares who's teaching this rot gut? The fact that it's being taught ought to be success enough for the left. You look at diversity. How about the football team? The sports team. You want to talk about diversity there? See, there isn't a diversity problem when it's majority African American. Nope, it's not a diverse or it's not a diversity problem if it happens to be majority gay. But now we've got a diversity problem in a university of Missouri. This is going to be an impetus for this type of thing happening all over the country. Well, my question is, how can there be such anger? in a place dominated by liberal Democrats. The faculty has to be all liberal Democrats, or 95% of it. The administration, whether they're liberal or, de or Republican or conservative or not, they may as well be liberal, because if they're conservative, they don't have the guts to stand up and show it. So for all intents and purposes, they're a liberal Democrat. Wherever you go on this campus or any other campus, it's majority liberals who are running it why is there such anger? Why is there so, so much fear? Why do the students, the precious children, their future, oh my gosh, our treasure, why do they feel so scared? Why? When it's the village, Hillary Clinton's precious village raising them. How can there be such anger? How can there be such palpable fear? Why is there the need for hunger strikes? Why do they need to protest this or that? Why, if the liberals run the show, is anybody allowed to drive around with a Confederate flag on their car anyway, decal or otherwise? With the liberals and the Democrats running the show, running the town, running the state, why is somebody running around shouting the N-word in the first place? What happened to the utopia? If I didn't know better, I would think the arch enemy of these people happen to be running the university. But it's their own people, the people they vote for, the people they believe, the people they trust. With liberals in charge, the lesson is clear. There isn't a safe space anywhere in this country. Even people who embrace liberalism feel unsafe. Even people who embrace liberalism and vote for it feel scared and unsettled. So universities have become the home. Universities have become, in fact, what I would call the safe spaces for community organizers, for community rabble-rousers, for shakedown artists, the people the president cheers, the people the president encourages to continue doing what they're doing, and the intellectual bullies who cannot stand for diversity of thought, who will not tolerate diversity of opinion, organizing young radicals and turning them against their parents and turning them against the United States of America. That's the passion of the modern-day Democrat Party and its figurative titular head, Barack Hussein O. And what we have... On parade, if you've ever wondered what I mean by young skulls full of mush, just turn on your TV 
and listen for five minutes to an interview of anybody on campus at the University of Missouri or now at Yale or at Harvard. Speaking of Yale, Yale students march over concerns about racial insensitivity. Yale, you talk about a haven of liberalism. How can this be? Hundreds of Yale students and supporters marched across campus yesterday to protest what they see as racial insensitivity. The March of Resilience is being called. Followed several racially charged incidents at Yale, including allegations that a fraternity turned a woman away from a party because she wasn't white. Students held signs, including one that read, Don't Look Away which is a reference to the horrific email sent by a Yale dean who cautiously, callously said that if a Halloween costume offends you, look away. That was this female student, a female professor, who tried to tell these little children, hey, if, if you see somebody wearing a skeleton suit for Halloween and it scares you, just turn away, don't look at it. And they mocked her. It's easy for you to say, but we are frightened by the first sight we see. It leaves an indelible mark on our young brains. So that's why the don't look away sign. And then Yale students protest, disrupt, and uh, have a pro-free speech event, which is exactly the opposite of what they're really seeking. They don't want free speech. They want to punish any speech they don't agree with or that makes them feel hurt or makes them feel angry or makes them feel unsafe. And this is a different story. This is a different story than the last one about racial insensitivity. This is a story displaying the real diversity and tolerance enjoyed at Yale and other colleges. And then, is there one more in this Yale? St oh, yes, Million Student March aims to fight for free college tuition and cancellation of student debt. And this is really what a lot of it's all about. They want to get all A's without having to attend class. They don't want it to cost anything. They don't want to have any student loans, free tuition, cancellation of student debt, million student march. They want freedom and diversity in grades. They want much more tolerance for marginalized students, meaning if you don't want to go to class, you shouldn't have to go to class. What an unfair and rigid requirement. That's at Yale. No matter where you look, Every place in this country that is run by liberal Democrats and has been for years is an abject total disaster with unchecked misery and unhappiness and anger and rage. How can that be? Yeah, just wait till health care is run 100% by Democrats. Imagine how much happiness is going to be there. You talk about orchestrated, calculated chaos.